Hi folks, it's Rich here, I hope you're all well. Today I'm gonna to show you a few J. Graydon isms to absorb into your playing. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you five, but there will most certainly be a part two where I go through a bunch more of them because really we're only scratching the surface today. So before we get into this, a quick plug. If you dig this kind of content, please consider checking out my Patreon. You get access to an extra guitar lesson every month, plus private Q and A's, uh, behind the scenes stuff, gear settings, backing tracks, and way more link in the description below. Okay, I'm gonna keep this fairly kind of short and sweet. So I'm gonna go through five concepts with you, kind of demonstrate it, and then show you where you can use them. So here we go. Okay, so concept number one is something I'm calling sax style chromatics. And it's very simple, but it sounds very J and it works like this. Let's say we're in the key of E as the backing track is, which is a dominant seventh tonality. So we can kind of happily mix major and minor pentatonics from the same root note. Um, if we take two scale tones that are on the same string, let's say D and E. <laughs> Essentially, all we're gonna do is join them via the chromatic note in the middle, but we're gonna do it using all pull-offs. This is something that seems to work best as like a descending kind of idea. So in isolation, it would sound like this, which kind of sounds like something or nothing, but when you incorporate it into a phrase, it's got a lovely kind of fluid quality to it. So in context, it might sound something like this. Okay, this effect is even more pronounced when we use examples that are separated by more than a tone. For example, if we were to take the 15th and the 12th fret of the B string, um, and it kind of accentuates it a little bit more. Now this will work anywhere where we have a tone, a tone and a half, or even more, essentially we're just gonna be joining two of our chosen scale tones with any modal or chromatic notes that sit in between them. Concept number two is repeated rhythmic ideas. Now this is a really simple one that again is really effective. And we're not actually paying too much attention to the notes really. What we're trying to do is latch onto a simple rhythmic motif, which we are going to repeat. So for example, in the opening solo, I think it is something like this. Which is really kind of two ideas um, repeating back to back. So the first lick, rhythmically, back, 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 mm, mm, mm. It's exactly the same phrase repeated. And then we have a very similar thing in the phrase that follows it. Okay, each rhythmic idea is repeating twice, so it gives our ears attached to latch onto it and process it. And this can be as simple or complex as you like. Uh, it's even more effective when you're kind of taking the same idea and then moving it from one octave to another. But even if you're just kind of moving through a scale, um, it gives it a nice kind of weight and authority. Okay, concept number three is of course pinch harmonics. This is a massive component of Jay's playing. Um, and really the work here is in getting the technique consistent. Um, for anybody who struggles with this, essentially what we're doing is gripping the pick pretty much as close to the edge of our thumb as we can get it. So that really there's only kind of like a millimeter or two protruding. What happens is as we strike the string, um, the vibration string immediately connects with the flesh of our thumb after it, creating a harmonic. I often find that tilting the pick forward uh, at a kind of 45 degree angle really helps with this. And rather than kind of like striking the string, what I tend to do is really kind of rest the pick on the string and then push it through it. For me, that's kind of what works. But the thing that you need to experiment with is where you pick between the end of the neck and the start of the bridge because you'll get lots of different harmonics jumping out in different places. For example. That's all the same note, but we're getting all these different harmonics depending on where we're picking. For me, if I pick either side of my middle pickup, I get two different pitches. 
Okay, so uh, you can kind of find that point on your guitar. And then as you're just playing as normal, you can throw these in at will. Um... <laughs> My advice here is just take your time with the right hand. Just sit and kind of work with one note. I'd advise starting on something like the D string because it's kind of uh, something about the thickness of it makes it very easy to get them to jump out on this string. It can be a little bit more challenging on the thinner strings and the very, very thick strings sometimes. So I would start there and just work on the right hand technique until that starts to happen. Practice it in isolation for a good while, and then when you can get it pretty consistently, start throwing it into your playing. Okay, concept number four is pedal tone. So this is something that you'll also notice Luke the do, but I suspect Luke may have kind of got it from Jay. Um, an example of this within the intro solo would be this bit. Um, okay. And essentially, the way to approach this is, we are probably gonna look for a note that is within the chord we're playing over to be our pedal tone, um, because we want something that sounds pretty stable. And then we're gonna alternate that note continuously with other notes from the scale. In this particular example, I was taking the E on the 17th fret of the B string, which is the perfect fifth of the chord that I was playing over. I was playing over A7, and then, the notes which I am alternating it with are all notes from the scale. So in this case, it is a flat seven against a, uh, a root, a major second, and then going up to a major third. Okay, but um, this will work in all sorts of different places, but my advice with it, as mentioned, is uh, I would probably go for a chord tone as your pedal note, and then taking either scale tones or possibly even chromatic notes as well to alternate that against. So for example, if we were doing it in E, I might choose to use E as my scale tone. Or as with the other example, I could take the fifth of the chord. This takes a little bit of fretboard knowledge, I guess. Uh, things like the cage system are really useful here because they really map out where all the chord tones are across the neck. But um, start simple and again, kind of practice it in lots of different keys until you get comfortable to visualizing those patterns everywhere. Okay, and uh, fifth and final concept for this video is uh, use of grace notes, which we do hear Jay do fairly frequently. Uh, there's kind of two types which I can talk about here. The first one um, is that kind, uh, where for instance, we may take a pitch on the E string, and then we're gonna slide up to the same pitch on the B string from like a tone or so below. We get this cool kind of fluid sound. Uh, another way we can do this is actually on the same string. So if we took, for instance, the 12th fret of the B string with our ring finger, we would play that note and then slide back into it with our index finger. So we're kind of constantly alternating between those two fingers, but on the same note. Uh, the thing that's tricky with that is accuracy and kind of making sure that you're not overshooting with the slide and going to a different note. The final way which we can achieve a similar kind of effect is with unison bending. So uh, there is a section in the solo which goes something like this. Um, which is really the same principle apart from using bends rather than slides. So it's where we are essentially bending up to a pitch on let's say the G string and then mirroring that with the unbent version of that note on the B string. The cool thing with these is that you can really use them anywhere. Uh, the way that I'd recommend practicing this is to start visualizing your scales on one string. So for example, if we take uh, E minor pentatonic on one string, then that kind of becomes the map for our unison bends. With some chromatics thrown in for good luck. Okay gang, there are five concepts to get you started. There will definitely be a part two to this video which will encompass Jay's great use of harmony guitar parts, uh, some of his faster legato ideas, and some more of his outside playing as well. 
Again, if you're enjoying this stuff, please consider signing up to the Patreon so that I can keep doing this stuff for you guys regularly. And I will see you all next Sunday.